As uni students, we are defined by seven meaningless numbers that make up our student ID. But these seven numbers do not define me. I am you, 5521238, and this is my story. My name is Emily Duncan and I was born on the 24th of January 1995. My parents weren't married and my mum described me as a wonderful surprise. My parents split up not long after I was born and my mum and I moved to a pig farm. But not like those cute little miniature pigs you see, but those gigantic scary pigs that snort all day. On the farm I had my first pet. It was a baby calf named Collingwood. I hand raised Collingwood and bottle fed her every day. But when mum and I realised the pig farm wasn't for us, we moved back home to June. We packed up everything we owned, including the trampoline, in the old trailer and set off. At this time mum and I bought our first house. It was a tiny little pink fibro shack covered in garden. Although the house wasn't much, we had the best time of our lives. We had some pretty awesome parties too. My childhood consisted mostly of me and my cousins. We rode motorbikes, had egg and spoon races, partied, and even drank beer. Now we are all grown up and there are six more of us. My mum was a single mum for most of my life, working six days a week as a real estate agent. On weekends, I would have to go to work with her while she held open houses. I had to pretend I was someone else's kid that was looking through the house so she could chat with the potential buyers. My school days were pretty normal. I liked school and I had great friends. I went to a Catholic high school and like most Catholic high schools, it had a priest to do all those religious things like school masses. Um, well, at least we had a school priest until my mum married him. Turns out you can't be a Catholic priest and be married. So while my mum gained a husband, my school was down a priest. So at 14 years old, Father Matt literally became my Father Matt. So it went from just me and my mum my whole life to the three of us. Then three soon became four, because in 2010 my parents fostered a little seven-year-old girl, Annie. I couldn't possibly ask for a better sister. I would describe my family as wonderfully blended. After finishing school, it was time to make some big decisions about my future, including moving away from home. This left me feeling quite a lot of excitement, but I was also quite anxious. So I packed up and left my little town of Junee and headed for the big smoke, aka Canberra. First, Canberra was great. I was at a fantastic university, I made new friends, opportunities were coming my way and I really started to think about my career. But opportunity doesn't necessarily equal happiness. At times, the city life can get lonely. There is a sense of disconnection and alienation. You are surrounded by everyone, yet connected to no one. But luckily I'm a huge believer in work hard, play hard, and this is where I find my balance in life. During the week I study hard and take every opportunity that comes my way in the city. But when the weekend rolls around, it's goodbye city and hello country. There 
here are five things you should know about my hometown, Junee. Number one, our town planners have a wicked sense of humour. Unfortunately, the sign is no longer there because it keeps getting stolen. Number two, we have a train track running straight through the middle of our town. You have to wait for trains to go before you can get to the other side. Number three, we have a jail with over 800 inmates. Number four, we love a drink, or 20. And lastly, we love a bit of Daryl Braithwaite. So for now, I'm living the best of both worlds and I have great family and friends. So I guess this is the end of my story. Well, at least for now.